Never underestimate an old school company's inability to bring itself into the modern era with the right management. Take Dun & Bradstreet, DMB, a company founded before the Civil War that's currently the leading source of commercial credit information with roughly 80% market share. The trouble with selling information in the digital age, though, is that it's become much easier for competitors to simply copy your data. That's why a little more than a year and a half ago, Dun & Bradstreet brought in Bob Carrigan as the new CEO. Carrigan set out to take this vast repository of corporate data, turn it into one global company that delivers indispensable content through modern channels. Your handheld. Dun & Bradstreet has now become more of a big data analytics play, with a database including information on more than 240 million individual companies that's updated 5 million times a day. Wow. That company, uh, the company thinks it could have a $24 billion addressable market across commercial credit, sales, marketing, info, data services, digital marketing, compliance, and supply chain management. Initially, some skepticism about Carrigan's ability to turn DMB around, but if you believed in him, your confidence has paid off. Stock's given you a more than 22% gain since he came on the show slightly more than a year back, a year ago. Now, back in April, the company announced it would acquire Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp for $320 million. This used to be Dun & Bradstreet's division that helps small businesses monitor and build their own credit file. But the old management sold it off to a private equity firm for $100 million in 2010. Remember, it was the old management. Now, it might seem galling to pay $320 million for a company you sold five years ago for less than a third that price, but Dun & Brad Credibility Corp is a much better asset now. I think the deal makes sense, and it will improve the company's small and medium-sized business offerings that used to dominate that. So can this turnaround continue? Let's check in with Bob Carrigan, the president and CEO of Dun & Bradstreet, hear more about how this company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Carrigan, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jeff. Good to see you, Bob. Have great a seat. You. How are you? All right. You've got this great slide because you had a fantastic analyst day that helped the stock. And it's right at the beginning. It said the era of Mad Men, not just the show, but business, has come to an end. What's that mean for Dun & Brad? Well, that means the math men are taking over because data is becoming more and more important to chief marketing officers. And that's what we're referring to in that slide. Marketing is moving from art to science. And companies are trying to figure out, how do I use data and marketing automation software to engage with customers in new ways? So that's one of the use cases for Dun & Bradstreet Data, helping CMOs engage with customers uh, through data and digital. Then we mentioned the competition. There's so many companies that come on and say, listen, we're the data and analytics company. We're the company you should hire if you're, uh, if you're salespeople on the road. Why, why is Dun & Brad the one to hire? Well, as you said, we have 240 million companies in our database. We own that data, right. and we throw off tremendous signals. And we've got proprietary analytics that help our customers gain insights. Nobody can touch that. And then our data is available through best-in-class applications. If you're a Salesforce user, you can get it right in that CRM environment. Uh, we announced our NetSuite agreement. Adobe, we have lots of important alliance partners so that if you're a customer, you can get this data when and where you need it. Okay, there's 75,000 weekly conversations with business. Where are all those people making those calls? <laughs> and that's individuals. That's expensive, isn't it, to maintain that? Well, you're referring to our Emerging Businesses Division. Yes. And that division serves small to medium customers. We call them emerging because our solutions help those companies emerge and become okay. bigger and better businesses. So we're engaged with those customers. We have call centers. We have a lot of digital interactions with those okay. customers. And we're very focused on helping the needs of those small to medium customers. And we're in touch with them all the time. Okay, so tell me why those companies want to give you their data if they're private. Because you have, you know, nobody knows anything about private companies. Right. Well, we get the data through 30,000 sources. So we have about 12,000 sources of trade. So we have uh, major financial institutions and companies give us accounts receivable information about those businesses. We also get signal data and other kinds of data like B2B e-commerce data and shipping data and social media data. And we combine this unstructured data that I just talked about right. with that accounts receivable data. And suddenly we've got a rich profile of a lot of businesses, 240 million of them. Okay, now, uh, one of the uh, earliest things in, in, your, in your presentation was, we, it's very unusual for a CEO to do this, we were too focused on looking inward. In other words, the, the way that the DMB, the old company, was approaching, they had the same data and they just weren't using it? What were they looking inward about and why are you looking outward now? Well, look, whenever you have a company with 174 years of history, you have some ways of doing things that, look, you've done in the past. And so what I always tell my employees is you have to act from the outside in everything we do. Let the market opportunities, let the customer needs drive what we do. So all of our behaviors now are shaped by that, and we're trying to focus on the external outward, outward market. Now, you're using some pretty aggressive organic growth targets. I mean, because you were coming in one minus four uh, to four. You're talking about maybe even getting to mid-single? 
Yeah, we told, we said at Analyst Day yesterday That's that we would get... a stretch, isn't it? Well, listen, we, we had 2% growth last year. Right. Dun & Bradstreet hadn't grown in five years. Right. And so when, I, when you look at the strategy we've laid out, uh, all the ways we're serving customers across new use cases, supply management, uh, compliance, sales and marketing solutions, our trade credit business, these are all areas at a time when data is becoming increasingly important. We're in right. a data-driven time. Dun & Bradstreet's very well positioned for that. And from what we're seeing, we feel pretty confident about getting to that target for next year. I see you throwing off a lot of cash, but you say the cash is going to be used to reduce debt. You're not yet in a position in the old days, you know, clean balance sheet, good dividend. Those days can come back. Of course. We throw off a lot of cash, and we right. delever really quickly. Right. But we want to maintain our investment-grade rating, and we've done some acquisitions lately, so it's important for us to use that cash to pay down some of that debt, and then we'll continue to use that cash wisely to drive to the strategy and any excess cash, we have a great history of returning that to shareholders. Yep, you sure do. Well, I think this is a very exciting company. I love what you've done. Obviously, the stock's been terrific. That's Bob Carrigan, the president and CEO of Dun & Bradstreet, an exciting company after many years where, frankly, it wasn't that exciting. And you, excitement is generating profit. That's the way we think of it here. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.